All right, today I'm going to take a look at a project I've been working on for a little while now, and it's it's had its trials and tribulations here. But in any case, I'm making this live steam train from scratch, and I had I had this frame from a kit I had had for a it was supposed to be for an electric train, and I had some wheels I bought one time on eBay they were LTI wheels are probably for a um, like a Hiawatha type train so what I did is I, I made this brass frame and mounted the wheels to it um, I ended up each wheel uh, I have keyed to the axle in, in uh, 90 degrees to preserve the quartering so that's how I ended up mounting these although they were supposed to be press fit wheels they, they go on with this screw I made side rods um, what happens here is the uh, the center set of drivers is powered, and the side rods, <coughs> excuse me, drive the rest of the uh, outer two wheels here. Um, when I first made this, I had a single start warm, and it just was too slow, so I made a uh, a double start worm here to work with this gear. So it's uh, in effect it's twice as fast as it was um, that's probably still going to need some attention I'm not sure I'm happy with the speed but I've never uh, I've never really run the thing on the track yet now what I did is um, I had to build this little uh, enclosure here to, to channel the heat up for the boiler and on the front here I had to put a shield because uh, unlike a lot of trains my my burner mounts on the front here instead of the back. Now, when I made the uh, when I made the pistons for this, the, the first piston setup I had was a, a single action piston, which uh, pushed, and then the flywheel, uh, the stored energy in the flywheel, resulted in the return of the piston. And I wasn't happy with the way that ran. And plus, I had the uh, I had the stroke too long. Um, I wanted to get some torque out of this, so I made a stroke, but uh, I've since reduced the stroke and I've converted this to a, a double action cylinder which pushes and pulls uh, at the same time. And uh, what I did is I, I laid this whole block out on, on my CAD and carefully positioned the um, carefully position the intake and the exhaust ports on this block here and what I've attempted to do is um, the intake port is open almost for the full length of the stroke but there's there's a uh, the way the steam works the steam expands when it enters the cylinder so if you keep the intake port open all the way through the complete stroke of the piston you lose some of the efficiency of the expanding steam doing work so the intake port shuts off just a little bit before the full length of the stroke the exhaust port on the other hand opens as soon as practical and that's why it's 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 wider than the uh, intake port so uh, I carefully then laid that out on my CAD system and actually machined this uh, block on a CNC machine um, I've silver brazed all the intake ports here so this is this is real nice here it's a nice solid setup um, I've got a piston I had to close in the back of the piston here and so it it pushes and pulls and I've got the uh, two ports for the uh, to accomplish that the push and the pull now when I first uh, on my first version of this my stroke on this uh, machine was a one inch total stroke and um, what happened it was just it was too slow so I've since um, reduced the stroke to a uh, it's a three quarter inch stroke which may or may not still be too uh, too long but it, it performed a lot better and I've also taken a lot of weight out of the flywheel the original flywheel I had I've also cut back some of the uh, weight here because I had a little bit of an imbalance problem and that, that seemed to correct that pretty good um, 
So the next thing I did is is I built the uh, I built this boiler. Take this off here. Um, it's a solid uh, piece that I machined. I bored out the inside. I've uh, I've silver soldered it um, with a high sil higher silver content solder than standard 6040 lead. Um, I have the fill here and also the steam intake which is here. Um, this this is to aid in filling the uh, boiler up. It, it seems to work the best if you fill it up about halfway which this accomplishes. And I've also silver brazed this shield on here. Um, this fits on here and it, it helps contain it helps contain the flame from the burner and the uh, some of the hot gases can escape out the side of this uh, flange here. A lot of the problems I had, now I, I built this this type of burner. The first burner I had was uh, I had wicks in, in several uh, little uh, tubes but the flame wasn't good, it was uncontrollable so I built this style of uh, burner which seems to uh, work very well. It's kind of on the order of a gas grill. You have a, one little pilot here and the pilot uh, heats this up. There's a wick in here and, and the uh, fumes, the gases from the uh, from the alcohol then ignite like your gas grill. I had to put this, uh, this shield here to help get the heat away from this front piece because this was heating up too much. So between the shield I added here and this shield and the, the uh, burner that I've, that I've worked on for a while. Um, I've got it where it, uh, it works pretty well. This stays fairly cool and the, uh, the flame is a nice, a nice even blue flame. It heats the boiler well. So all that's, uh, all that's going good. There was a lot of uh, trial and error with this thing and uh, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, fire this thing up a little bit and you can see how it runs. I don't have a uh, I don't have a safety valve on the boiler yet, and um, I'm going to eventually put that on, but I don't think it's a a serious issue for right now. Um, I machined the fittings here, made these fittings so I can take the boiler off. So I'm going to reassemble the uh, the piston and whatnot, and uh, you can see this thing run. Um, it's been a good learning experience here. It's it's these are very simple, but there's a, there's a lot going on with these uh, little uh, steam trains. So uh, you know if you ever see anybody that builds one of the uh, real large scale steam trains that are uh, exact duplicates of a real engine, <laughs> be impressed for sure because uh, that was a lot going on to do that. So let me uh, let me light this up and uh, you can see how it works.
Okay, I've got um, alcohol in the uh, reservoir here. I've got about a half a tank of water in the boiler. I'm all connected with my uh, union here, which is good. Um, what I'm going to do now is light the uh, light the pilot. Um, now. I wet this all down because uh, <laughs> you can have some pretty exciting times with uh, alcohol and fire, but uh, in any case, um, I don't know how good that's coming across, but the, uh, the pilot's lit and when the, uh, when the manifold heats up, then we'll get uh, a nice blue flame coming across the whole length of that manifold. Now, I, I don't know how this is going to come across, but I'm, I'm trying to show that that manifold is fully lit along the entire length of that burner, so uh, that's coming up pretty good. This heats up in about uh, maybe five minutes or less, which I'm certainly not going to make the, uh, the viewer suffer through. So when this is about ready to run, I'll, I'll resume. Okay, I've had this uh, heating up for a couple minutes now, and uh, in, any, in any case, I, I see some... Uh, some activity at the port, so this is going to be ready to start as soon as the uh, any uh, moisture clears out of the line. There it goes. Now, in real time, that probably took about two or three minutes to come up the steam, which is is pretty good, you know. Um, it runs nice and smooth. Um, I'm, I'm real happy with this. Um, what I do is I run steam oil down through the through the line through here to lubricate the uh, cylinder. Uh, eventually, um, I'm going to put some type of oiler, some type of probably a displacement lubricator in it. Um, but uh, I'm lucky to have gotten this far with the thing because it was <laughs> it was a lot of trial and error. But it's uh, it's running pretty reliably now, and uh, I haven't had it on the track yet. So uh, that'll be the true test. Um, I may I may shorten the stroke a little bit more, but that requires a whole new piston and block assembly and everything else. So I'll have to see how that goes. I also have to route the uh, exhaust uh, somewhere. I'm, I'm going to try and bring it up to the front of the train. It has two, two exhaust ports because it, it is a push-pull. The, the, uh, the alcohol reservoir is staying nice and cool now with the shielding I put on it. So I'm pretty happy with that. That was presenting a real problem at first. I seem to have a good balance uh, between keeping the heat in and maintaining the flame. It's nice and quiet, nice and smooth, and I'm pretty happy with the way this thing's running. Like I said, one of the things I may have to do is, uh, is gear it up a little bit for speed, but I got, I got to see how fast it really runs and how much, uh, how much pulling power it has. So uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy. A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the construction right now is pretty crude because I was, uh, you know, I was experimenting and, and uh, I'm going to clean this up a lot and, and do some better soldering and whatnot. But uh, I kept having to try different things, so it, uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. I have a bearing. It's uh, in a little housing, a sealed ball bearing that the shaft to this flywheel runs on to the worm gear. So that, that runs real nice, nice and solid, nice and smooth. And I, I, uh, I lap these uh, surfaces between the, uh, the oscillating piston and, and, the, uh, and the valve block. I've lapped them to they were as perfect as I could get them anyhow. And uh, so all in all, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way this is running right now. Took a bit of time to get here. So thanks for looking.